Welcome back to our daily devotions for the week of November 17th. As we discussed last Sunday, we're spiritually preparing for a special time of worship this coming Sunday when we name some difficult things we've been through as a church family over the last year. It's not a scary listening session or anything like that. I don't want to introduce extra anxiety into any of our lives. It'll just happen during the sermon, and, and I pray we'll actually enrich your experience of worship and, and life in this community of faith. As we come to the close of this particular year, it's just so important that we recognize some things we've been through as a family and that we begin to make space in our hearts for that which God is doing now in our midst. I'm sure you've all heard the story of Jonah, the reluctant prophet and the famous whale. It's in the Old Testament. There's a book called Jonah. Last night, our children's ministry shared their end of the semester program entitled Go, Go, Jonah. Between uh, Larry, Martha, Brenda, Jeff, Julie, and Wanda's Thanksgiving dinner and this great show, it was such a fun night. It was, it was so great. Many of you were here. The story of Jonah is one we all remember from Bible school. But unless you go review it from time to time, you might miss the most complicated and interesting part. We know all about God telling Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell the people to repent from their sins so that they might be saved from their sins. We know about how Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He, he actually got on a boat bound for Spain to just get away from God and God's demand on his life. Jonah was thrown overboard to stop this raging storm. God stilled the storm. The sailors worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and made vows. And Jonah got swallowed up by a big old fish. Three days and three nights proved ample time for Jonah to experience a change of heart. Jonah went to Nineveh, preached God's message, and the people listened. They repented of their sin. Jonah 3, chapter 3, verse 10, reports, When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. End of story, right? No, not the end. Jonah actually became very angry, so angry at the Lord, so angry, in fact, that he, he said he would rather die than to live in a world governed by a gracious God who is merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. That's chapter 4, verse 2. We discover that Jonah wasn't actually afraid to go among the scary, evil Ninevites. He was afraid God would be merciful to the Ninevites. And his worldview just couldn't bear the thought of a God abounding in mercy rather than operating in judgment and punishment. Jonah's way of operating in the world was rooted in this place of you get what you deserve. If you're good, you, do, you get good things. If you're bad, you get punished. He wasn't able to see God creating space for all our hearts to be transformed by love, mercy, and grace. Even Jonah's heart, which clearly still needed some work. The kids sang a beautiful song last night near the end of the performance. It's called Without Love. It merges the story of Jonah with the love of God demonstrated by Jesus on the cross, and it helps tell the gospel story that is at the heart of all we do. The last verse of that song goes like this. You can say you love the Lord and say you are one of his. You can try to read and believe his word. But without the love of Christ, your heart's as cold as ice, for only love can change the world. The book of Jonah concludes with God justifying his mercy. Jonah winds up getting angry about a little bush dying from one day to the next. God had sent a bush to provide him some shade and on and on. Uh, God says to Jonah, why, well, you're concerned about a bush that sprang up and died in a night. Should I not be concerned about a whole city in which there are 120,000 persons who don't know their right hand from their left? At the heart of God's movement in the world is a deep awareness of the problem of human sin and brokenness and the creation of space where life-changing transformation can happen. I'm thinking God is creating space for life-changing transformation here among us today, for you and for me. I can't be mad about that. What about you? Amen.